Uh, Baby Mosquito somehow makes me think of you two cross with Leonard Cohen. Neat. Well, that's, I mean, that's a big one. I, you know, I live, I have my house in the sticks. I have my rain barrels and... Rain barrels? <laughs> I grew up in the woods, you know, and uh, I'm still real connected to that. And, you know, uh, we're supposed you to... You do have indoor plumbing, right? <laughs> I have indoor plumbing. <coughs> But these mosquitoes, you know, it's quite a romantic thing. And I live... Oh, there, wait, dude, I'm from Manitoba. There is nothing romantic <laughs> about a mosquito. You're, <clears throat> you're right. <laughs> yeah. I guess my romance comes at dusk when the bats start to circle my... And eat the mosquitoes. My, and eat the mosquitoes. Okay. It's the cyclical nature. It's the fact that these things are demonized. And, and I look at my rain barrels and they just look so cute there in their larvic state, you know? One word, malaria. <laughs> Listen, tell me where, I agree. Tell me where you live and I'll come up with some DDT and we'll fix this. Yeah, yeah. You've written the song. We don't need them anymore. <laughs> um, you don't want to break me. Mm -hmm. Ugly. Y yeah. yeah. Is it? Pretty ugly. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just I'm, I'm fetching my uh, fisherman's friends here. Um, Half of that song was written in Tasmania. Of course it was. Yeah, it's, a very, it's got a very Tasmanian flavor to it. But I had seen Nick Cave that night. and um, Of course you did. Yeah, and I was walking home, or say home, you call your hotel home because mm -hmm. it's the closest thing you got. It's where your socks are. And um, I was lost trying to find my way back to downtown Hobart. I'd also gone through a hellish seven-hour horrible, one of those, this is the end, telephone conversations and the show just inspired me it was so dark and so bleak and I just I kept walking home thinking you don't just want to break me you want to tear me apart it was very much an extraction from the experience of that show now, I often wonder mm -hmm. about women who are the subject of breakup songs yeah what they must think and feel when they realize that ooh that's my life on that record I sort of feel the same to be honest with you I kind of wonder It's, it's, I think, a bit strange. It's strange for me. Like, I don't necessarily want to advertise every detail of, you know, ongoing intimacies, but you can't help it. It's my job, and I think my music is made better when you approach it with a certain amount of honesty, and so I don't know how I would have avoided doing that. And the longer mm. I'm in this job, in this business, and writing songs, the more I realize I cannot just write about nothing. It ends up feeling very empty, and I think there's more honesty on this record than there's been in a long time. And all right, which which brings me to Tokyo Bicycles. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> what are you? Okay. <laughs> what, what are you writing about there? I mean, I, I'm I'm listening to the record. It's on in the background, and somebody from Tokyo named Mr. Something or rather Mr. Has, Shibuya. Shibuya yeah. has a tubular. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of inside jokes, I think, in that song. It's funny. It's a real travel log, that song. And mm. one of the great blessings that I've had, I guess, is that I'm some kid from northern Ontario who has managed to travel the world over and over and over and over again. And, and so half the song's about buying pens from a Japanese store in Paris that I go to all the time. And then the other half of this song is really about me and my piano player hiring bicycles in Tokyo and cycling around the city till dark. And I'm a, I was a real militant cyclist when I was here in Toronto for many years. And now the city feels like there's more people here, it's more aggressive, it's more dangerous. And in Tokyo, it's such a respectful culture, the Japanese. And I've never felt safer in a big city riding a bike as I did there. And it in just, Tokyo? In Tokyo. With all those people on the streets and those weird... Everybody's moving around you and making sure that you've got space. And um, it's, it's a blessed place to be. It's very safe, and it's just, it's a respectful environment. Okay. And then this guy, Mr. Shibuya, <laughs> we were actually on the subway going to Shibuya, which is kind of the entertainment district. In fact, we're looking out over that crosswalk, mm. and the Shibuya was, is that place in Tokyo where that famous crosswalk where everybody goes mad. This guy comes in with an Elvis hairdo, but he's got this sort of blue business suit that all the rest of the Japanese businessmen on the train do. And my Piano man says, and I'm sure I'm boring you, but he said, oh, that's Mr. Shibuya, Mr. Shibuya. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. I have to ask you about vampire bats. Yeah. 
because I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> we, I, <laughs> I sort of look at culture sometimes and I think, um, you know, you look at the Dukes of Hazard movie or Mission Impossible movie, and I'm sure these are fabulous films, but sometimes I get a little bit, I, I get feeling like we are, culture is starting to regurgitate itself too close to the source, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I can feel the 90s revolution coming, and then we'll, you know, the two, in 2011 we'll be, you know, we'll be aping what we were doing in 2008. You know what I mean? It sort of feels like that. It almost feels like culturally we're running out of steam and we don't have much to say. Yeah, and the so retro cycles are coming closer and closer together. And it's boring me, in yeah. a way. And I think with We Ain't No Vampire Bats, it's just my comment about, there are people who are still thinking and trying to do things that are creative. And also, I guess there's, in Australia, I'm fascinated by... Well, it's the, you know, in Sydney, Australia, there's animals that can kill you all over the place. There's it, snakes. It's, it's there's the deadliest continent on the, on the planet. And it must be the deadliest major city, like first world major city. And at night, again at dusk, you see the vampire bats flying, flying over the Sydney Harbor Bridge, and it is weird. It is weird. And I'm going to wish you luck on singing <laughs> We'll Make Time live. Yeah. That's going to be tough with... Uh, with there's a lot of lyrics there. I'm working on it right now. Because um, I, I look back, you know, have you ever seen a George Carlin concert? Oh, uh, from George, I've, George Con uh, Carlin per performance? No. Unbelievable. These long string, strings of stream of consciousness thoughts. And he never once pauses to go um or ah. And I've always been in, like, awe of, of somebody who can do that because that's a real skill. It's fluid. Um, this is... This record, kind of like my second record, Delicious Wolves, when we took it to the band to try and start play these songs live, it's largely unsingable. This record is largely unsingable. There's a lot of stuff that's tricky. And I would thought I was being real clever when I was writing that song. I love a lot of rap music. And, and I, I think that I was trying to have my Jay-Z come alive there. But I, I'm with you. I don't know how the hell I'm going to do that. It'll be fun. You know, when, when you get it down, yeah. I mean, it's going to get a hell of a reaction from the crowd because it'll be so impressive. <laughs> Seriously, it'll, it'll be... I'm in co talks right now with Kenny G, actually, about my, his circular breathing <laughs> technique. And his hairstylist, of course. Well, there's a, there was a song from... Yeah, good. <laughs> um, there's a song from 1973. See if you can track it down. It's by a band called Reunion. Mm -hmm. And it's called Life is a Rock. It's available on YouTube. And... We'll make time, even when there ain't no time, made me think of it. So Reunion. Here, re, band is reunion. Life is a rock. It runs three minutes. It has more words per second than any other pop song in the history of Top 40. And, I mean, it was a one-hit wonder. I don't know if they ever played it live. But, uh, and you can hear the edits. But there aren't that many. Yeah. It's, it's trust me on this one. <laughs> I will.